Mike Bailey, a pioneer of the Gulf Coast wine scene and award-winning food entrepreneur. I know a lot of you wonder what to do with your moon pies. So I've got some wine suggestions for you. Lemon moon pies, Sauvignon Blanc, Chenin Blanc, or Pinot Grigio. Stuart Reb Donald, acclaimed food and travel writer and world-class chef. I was the chef de casserole. <laughs> I made the casseroles in the frozen food department. For more than a decade, they've combined their expertise to answer your questions and introduce you to the culinary movers and shakers you want or ought to know. Four-time Taste Award finalists, 12-time Nappy Award losers. They are the dynamic duo of dining. Drop, drop, keep a screaming before. Mike and Stu on FM Talk 106.5. Well, good morning. Welcome to the... Sip a Chew Show with Mike and Sue. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. You make yeah. me feel welcome. Yes, yes. We've got a... And y'all too. So much to talk about today. So many things to talk about today. Yeah. Our experiences of the week. And experience. Experience. And of course, we'll cover some birthdays. We've got a lot of birthdays of people of importance <laughs> and, uh, and some announcements and things like that. But... But we want to say uh, congratulations to the Auburn Nation again today. Uh, S- Simone Biles is just she tearing it up, isn't she? Yeah, she didn't go to Auburn, though. No. I thought she went to Auburn. Suni Lee went to Auburn. Suni Lee went to Auburn. <laughs> wow. So congratulations, anyway. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with what she went through physically being told she'd never be able to do gymnastics again, mm-hmm. it's incredible Yeah, what she's done. and. Her and, and Simone both, man, it's just so fun to watch. Mm-hmm. Gymnastics is the only thing I've watched from the Olympics. Well, I haven't watched any of it, but uh, the the uh, guy from Turkey with a gun. <laughs> that's, you know, the, he shot well enough to be American, didn't he? He he. Uh, what gets me about it is it's somebody made a meme, of course. Yeah. There was a lot of memes about it on Facebook and social media about uh, – Someone quoting in corner phrase, no one ever remembers who came in second. Mm-hmm. Well, they do this guy because he's <laughs> like, he's the hottest thing there right now. Yeah. Uh, just casually with his hand in his pocket. And, yeah. and he'd probably be a good guy to take hunting. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, uh, just just to shoot. Just watch him shoot. See what he yeah. shoots. Get some rabbits and get some yeah. some pheasant and well, you know, a for a little meal. while, History Channel did a series of sharpshooters, mm-hmm. and that's pretty incredible what they can do. I mean, it's it looks like it desa- defies the laws of physics. Mm-hmm. Those uh, entertainment sharpshooters, mm-hmm. that's pretty awesome. There's a, uh, a commercial, and I think it's for an Olympic archer. It's for a lady archer. Uh, and she's in the yard, and there's this tiny little stick of uh, PVC sitting sideways on a mount that the arrow barely fits in. Mm-hmm. And then she walks 100 yards away and puts the arrow through it. Wow. And it's just unbelievable. Well, I remember uh, several years ago I bought a firearm, and I, I went to safety courses. And uh, Thank you. And, uh, and My and safety course was a dad who was a cop. That helps, too. Yeah, That's yeah. great. Great way. And my best friend is an FBI uh, certified firearms instructor. Okay. Well, this guy used to be uh, yeah. uh, uh, a Secret Service and mm-hmm. state trooper who, who owns the place out in Westmobile. Yeah. And great family, by the way, great family. Yeah. Anyway, after all that training and learning to aim and everything at the mm-hmm. very end, he says, just hold it out in front of you yeah. <laughs> and look at the target and don't look down the barrel. And I hit the target more that way than I did sitting there trying to aim and get it. Yeah, I mean, everyone's going to be different. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm a decent shot. Uh, my dad and my brother both were phenomenal. In fact, they took first and second place in the uh, the sheriff's mm-hmm. uh, sharpshooting competition, state sharpshooting contest. My dad was more proud of my brother coming in first than mm-hmm. he was of himself coming in second. Well, I'm, I'm proud of being an ex-Boy Scout and all that and, and – uh, learning all the survival skills that they still teach uh, gun skills and gun safety in the Boy Scout That's the secret camps. to it. it what, you got to learn safety. Yep, the and safety. respect. You have yes. to respect and, and, uh, because, yeah, you can do a lot of damage I, in a I, real quick moment of emotion. And I did, I did a lot of pheasant, a lot of dove, a lot of quail hunting in my life. 
I love small bird, game uh, birds. Yeah, they're delicious. I could see doing that. Rabbits, I enjoy squirrel uh, sitting in a tree. Wait to ambush a deer. And that's, is, and is and that's not their, interesting. That's that's their thing. That's great. Yeah. Uh, great for them. But uh, I prefer to walk the fields and, mm-hmm. and uh, get to a rabbit. Hunt. And, yeah. To hunt, not ambush. Walking through those big old thick briars. And then, you know, all the guys that I knew that deer hunted in, in Sims, which was everyone but me pretty much, mm-hmm. were just like, well, you can't get out there and stalk a deer. Really? Because the natives did it for a long time a long before time. guns ever showed up. Yeah. You know, they had no problem stalking a deer. But it, it makes that it makes that your game that you sh- hunted and shot taste mm-hmm. that much better for yeah. you. <laughs> and, and and it's just it's better for you. Mm-hmm. Um, wild game is extremely healthy. You know, used you know to, unless you, it's like eating nuclear waste or something. Yeah, it comes from Chernobyl. But. Used to before the Bayway was put in, you could hunt in the in the Causeway area. Well, I'm not old enough to remember when the Causeway wasn't there. What about the Bayway? Oh, okay. Well, I'm you barely could shoot. Older. You could you could go hunting mm-hmm. uh, and duck hunting. It's still duck hunting. And there. some of the I happened to go on the worst day ever to go duck hunting, and because uh, the edges of the water were crispy with ice, and uh, so it was a normal duck hunting day. It's that's most, why my dad for never most took places. Me. That's why my dad never. I asked him, "Why don't we ever go duck hunting?" He goes, "Because the only do duck hunting is in cold, rainy weather." Yeah, and it was cold that day, yep. and uh, but the problem, you know, as you know, when we get a, a front out of the north, mm-hmm. it leaves about fifty foot of muck between <laughs> the water yeah. and the and the bank, and, it, and we would shoot ducks, and they would fall on the banks, and we couldn't get them. Yeah, we didn't take a dog with us; it was just too cold to take a dog with us. But uh, I've never done that again. <laughs> <laughs> Well, if there's anybody out there that wants to take Mike and I on a complimentary duck hunting <laughs> excursion into the Delta, I suppose we'll make an exception, won't we, Mike? Oh, I, I, yeah. I, I, and I forgot my gloves, too, that day. And I lost a boot in the mud. <laughs> so it was a miserable day. And when I got home with those little old ducks, I just threw them away because I'm thinking, I'm so mad. <laughs> I don't even feel like dressing them. Oh, that, uh, that stinks that they died for nothing. Well, they froze in the boat. <laughs> then they're still fresh. Yeah, I know, but it was yeah. just a pain. Yeah. Um, so I was mad. I was young. I was mad. Yeah. So, <laughs> so but because uh, you lost a boot. You know, when we come back, we got some interesting things to talk about. Really? Like what? Well, well our dinner we went to the other night. Yeah, man, man Waffle House had it slinging, didn't they? They did. Yeah. Scattered, smothered, whatever. Covered, chunk, kicked yeah. around, generally abused. <laughs> and then uh, we got a, 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 a another announcement by, about one of our sponsors. So. Yeah. Hey, we could probably start the next segment with that. Yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah. That'd be but we still one. got two minutes to chat now. So I know. I see, we're just teasing, we teasing, teasing is what we're doing. <laughs> All kinds of tea. Today is uh, today is National Chocolate Chip Cookie and White Wine Day. Not that they go together, but that's say, what you like. What if you were in a position where you had to have a white wine with a chocolate chip cookie? Mm. Would it be like a a sweet riesling mm, no. kind of thing, or are you gonna go with something crisp I'm and go, dry? I'm gonna go with a Vouvray because Vouvray. Oh, is, those are good. A Vouvray is considered the, a red wine drinker's white wine. They they are fantastic. It's a little heavier. Yeah, no uh, I, uh, Garrick got me to try one mm-hmm. one time, and it was spectacular. France and South Africa make incredible Vouvray. No. That's a, it's a incredible Vouvray. Yeah, and the, and the Vouvray is the uh, the grape, or mm-hmm. is it a style? It's the grape. Okay, mm-hmm. but it, because they confuse us with that. Sometimes they name it after the grape. Sometimes they, they name, name it after the neighborhood the region. Yeah. It's all confusing. France, get your stuff together. They got a different word for everything. Except rendezvous. They use the American <laughs> word for that. And, uh, yeah, the Olympics have uh, been going on, and all you and I can think about is we are 27 days for putting toe to leather. Oh, I can't wait. Yeah. I watched a little bit of the uh, the uh, Hall of Fame Bowl the other night. And that was, oh, okay. It was like hearing those whistles and, mm-hmm. and hearing pads hit and pop, pop. <sighs> now, I liked the induction ceremonies. That mm. is something I didn't realize they had already done that. Mm. I could sit there all day and watch the induction I've been ceremonies. there. I've been to this uh, uh, Football Hall of Fame. It's, it, you can yeah. spend hours just walking around. Yeah. 
And yeah. it's everything. College is uh, yeah. the Negro well, it's football the leagues and football Hall of Fame, not the NFL. That's not the NFL. Right. Exactly. Hall of Fame. It's it's the football Hall of Fame. Two five one three four three oh one oh six. Mike, what in the world is that number? That's the Callahan's Hour Social Club call and text in line. The dynamic duo of dining. Sip and chew with Mike and Stu. Call 343-0106. Now back to Mike and Stu. Hey, Stu, I want to make a correction. Do it. Uh, I got my wine stuff backwards because I was thinking of a different grape. But uh, Vouvray is a region of France, and the okay. primary grape is Chenin Blanc. Okay. And yeah, the, I'm the, very familiar with the, Chenin Blanc. The varietals yeah. are usually based uh, on the region. I was thinking of Viognier. So that was the, that was the, uh, but I do make mistakes every now. And. Not very there's, often, but I do. There's make a some. lot of wine out there. That's uh, too much. That's too much. Yeah, to it's, it's no one person could, could oh, remember oh, that. I'm gonna tell you between Italy and Spain, they have so many high high hybrids of different types of varietals where mm-hmm. they cross pollinate and pro- yeah. cross breed the different grape varieties mm-hmm. and. And believe it or not, in Italy, tinkering with what the good Lord like, made, uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, messing with Mother Nature too. And then, mm-hmm. but uh, you've got this is a, this is a, a desired characteristic of a lot of Italian wines is is that tarry scent and taste, or that asphalt, mm-hmm. and they're similar. Uh, but people love that. But anyway, well, uh, I got a question for you. Yeah, if I were say in Baldwin County. Mm-hmm. Maybe I got a hunting camp or fishing camp. Mm-hmm. I got a group of people, and I want to throw together a breakfast. Mm-hmm. Could I find any decent sausage anywhere over there? Funny you should ask us. Now you can. Yeah. Now, believe it or not, Hall Sausage and Wholesale Meats is now available in the Piggly Wigglies in Baldwin County. There you go. So and, run and, out and there. And what would you serve with that? What uh, would you recommend for that? Well, there's a, so many different things you can do. You know, I like to take the red hots and chop them up in, mm-hmm. in little dices and then put them in cabbage or something like put that. Put them in mac and cheese. Mm-hmm. Put them in mac and cheese. If you, I have, But, I, but I, if I I'm know. serving breakfast to a bunch of fellas getting ready to go oh, fishing. Or well, I'm, I'm going to take my eggs and I want to put some uh, smoked, uh, some Cajun smoked sausage in it. Or yeah. the andouille. Ooh, or oh. both. Oh, oh. Next one. Ain't he crazy, y'all? I'm 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 living on edge, man. What if I'm hungover and I just want a good breakfast? Uh, I would go to Bob's. Where is that? At the corner of Fat and Happy, man. Oh yeah, down yeah, there, yeah. Uh, St. Francis and North Jackson. Mm-hmm. And I bet I bet they're packed right now because it's turning out to be a nice morning. It's going to yeah. get warm, probably no. rain. But you know, oh, I'm okay I'd get with down the there rain right now. <laughs> rain means the air. I'd get down there warm. right after the show if I were you. Go down there. <laughs> Is that when Mike will be making his appearance? Uh, I don't know. I don't know yet. It's a toss up. I got so many things I got to do today. But anyway, and we want to thank uh, the fine folks over there at Butch Cassidy's in the heart of Flow Shell. That's Old Shell in Florida Street, if you don't know what we're talking about. Yeah. And, uh, well, on the subject of mm -hmm. uh, Butch Cassidy's, who's the owner of that? Oh, Roy Sewer. Didn't we see him last week? See, we saw C. C C were yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah we had we we met him for a, a snack didn't we I might have to go to Butch Cass I mean I might have to go to Bob's to get a Bloody Mary this morning <laughs> I don't know we'll see yeah we did see him the other day yeah. and and we saw him at the new place which used to be the Admiral Sims yeah which is now the yeah. Admiral it's been that for about five or six years right yeah right the, the name changed right. years people ago still who, call it that but. I'm going to tell you, what we saw the other day yeah. was phenomenal. That ain't, your, that ain't your daddy's Admiral Sims. That's right. Yeah. This place is fine. Yeah. And you look in it and you step outside and say, yeah, I'm still in Mobile. Yeah. And then walk back in. And I'm go, not in Vienna in 1765. <laughs> I'm swear. in Mobile in 2024. It, the interior looked like it belonged in New Orleans or Chicago or New York. Well, they said they based the interior off the Saint in New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Which is another property that this company owns. Mm-hmm. Uh, that they were inspired by the decor there and tried to do a Mobile version of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, the hotel is just stunning. It uh, it is very baroque. Mm-hmm. 
mm-hmm. in style, and then you've got some rooms that are very modern. And I think I read on their website that what they were going for was French opulence, mm-hmm. which is the Baroque period at its best, and then uh, reserved modernism. Yeah. It was uh, just a beautiful building. The uh, paintings that we saw all around the lobby and area was uh, – they were paintings that you would recognize as being in a museum, like a uh, picture of the god Apollo, you know, driving his team of horses around the sun. But the face of Apollo was that of Pierre Le- Lemoyne d'Iberville. Mm-hmm. And uh, it was just, it, apparently that was something that old Pierre used to do, was commission all of these paintings to ha- that were duplicates or similar to famous paintings in history and have his face <laughs> superimposed on them. Just uh, ridiculous. But uh, the hotel had commissioned paintings in that style. They were very Baroque, and all of them were essentially godlike beings with Pierre Lemoyne's face on them. Yeah. Yeah. And... Uh, and then we go into the the cocktail, the little bar, the cocktail area. It was very modern. I think it's called the living room. Yeah. Uh, well, I did not catch the name. That's cool. <clears throat> it was very comfortable. A gold piano, mm-hmm. grand, baby grand. I was looking room. for Liberace <laughs> to show up. <laughs> uh, I asked David Holloway if he was going to tickle the ivories, and he, he declined to. Uh, uh, then we got in there, and, and let's see, we had Rob Holbert there mm-hmm. from Lanyette. We had David Holloway, the legend. Who else all was well, there? Well, the gentleman sitting at our table, he was with AL.com as well, yeah. him and his wife. I, I forget their names. Yeah, but. they were very nice. I think they're, he's out of Birmingham. If all maybe, AL, maybe, Pretty much yeah. all AL.com yeah. is, if, the, if they're working in an office. Yeah. Because all the other Probably newspapers died. are gone. Yeah. Yeah. And they work from home. They have one central office. That, so basically every city in Alabama has mm-hmm. the same newspaper. Yeah. Is, is the way that works. And then they'll tweak stuff and, you know, from Mobile or Huntsville or, or Montgomery. Right. And there, there are still some cities that have independent newspapers or are owned by a different company. But, right. Right. And <laughs> then some that actually still have newspapers on paper, which is just <laughs> quaint. Well, I was surprised Andy McDonald wasn't there. Yeah, well, he may have been uh, gigging. <laughs> he could have been. Yeah, he may, he, he may have had the old mandolin out. Doing a tune somewhere, fancy. and he plays it mighty fine. Yeah, he plays oh. a beam mandolin. Him yeah. and Phil, Phil Proctor both do. Yeah, but uh, we had just an incredible menu uh, experience. Oh my god! Just the chatting experience. with, with uh, Terrell, the the mm-hmm. general manager, and Savannah, who was in charge of promotions and marketing. They're just as friendly as they could be. Uh, she was from Atlanta. He was from uh, South Carolina, South mm-hmm. Kakalaki. Uh, he had left the Charleston area to come to Mobile, and I think he was really seeing that there were some similarities between yeah. the two. Uh, the antebellum homes are, mm-hmm. are things that both Mobile and Charleston are known for. Yeah. The oak trees. We've got the Spanish moss. I'm not sure if they do or not. I think they do. Yeah. I think they do. <clears throat> and uh, so uh, he he and I were talking about different hiking trails and stuff because he's a hiker not not so much a backpacker mm-hmm. but a day hiker and to him it sounded like a 10 mile hike was nothing which right. in case you didn't know on average that's about five hours most most people walk at two miles an hour mm-hmm. so if you've ever wondered uh, how far how long would that take it's two miles an hour is what most people go mm-hmm. and uh, so if he's doing a 10-mile day hike, that means he's two and a half out, two and a half back. Mm-hmm. Or it's a five-hour loop. Yeah. And then you're going to stop for breakfast or well, lunch wanna, at some you point. You want to stop and just look at things, too. Exactly. That's the whole point of it. Mm-hmm. And you're seeing things you can't see from a car. Right. And that if you saw them on a TV, no matter how big the screen was and how high the definition, it just doesn't do it justice. Yeah. I remember uh, my best friend had just gotten a 70-inch 4K high definition television, biggest TV any of us have seen. And we were watching these National Geographic videos of Yellowstone Park. Mm-hmm. And everyone's standing in front of the TV to try and get that feel of being on the mountain. Like, Man, this is just amazing. This is incredible. And I was standing there going, it's no, it's not. Mm-hmm. It's amazing that it's a television. 
it is not amazing compared to standing actually standing on the there. Yellowstone Valley and looking up actually standing there, at yeah. little river at little Yellow River Falls and uh, going to Lake Yellowstone. Mm-hmm. There's a difference between seeing 500 buffalo on the screen mm-hmm. and seeing 500 buffalo 500 feet from you. Right. And well, it's like when I went to Argentina and Chile, everywhere, right. everywhere you went, you could see the Andes Mountains. <laughs> exactly. And just looking at them like you're just jaw dropping. I remember my our first drive out there, and my dad said, you're going to be able to see the, yeah, the Rockies today. Oh, we're getting to the Rockies today? No, 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 that's not what I said. You're going to be able to see the Rockies today. Yeah. He said, you see them about eight hours before you get to them. Wow. And and he was right. It was just, and then, you know, they get obscured because then we got into the Black Hills. Yeah. And, you know, but when you're on those flat desert, and South Dakota is funny, you hang a left on the far eastern border, and there's an interstate that takes you all the way west to Rapid City on the other end of the state, and you can darn near see from one end of the state to the other. Huh. Right there. And it's because, you know, if you're staring at a horizon, the farthest you can ever see is 11 miles. And that's usually if you're on the ocean or on a flat desert, that's the curvature of the earth. That's how we know it's round, y'all, Yeah, <laughs> is you can see about 11 miles. But we could see further, and my father figured out it's because the road was steadily gaining altitude, but not perceptibly. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and it was just... It's a drive that you will never forget. It's not like anything you've ever been on. 251-343-0106 is the Callahan Irish Social Club call and text in line. We're going to take a break, and we're going to work on a little technical problem we have going on right now. Mike's got gas. In case you just wondered. <laughs> <laughs> 